Uh, good morning, Chloe, and thanks for your time this morning. And what a coincidence that we happen to be talking about this on a morning uh, like this, where we're, we're looking at just the, the damage caused by, by the heavy rain and flooding uh, around the country this morning. Looking at the theme for this year, weather ready, climate smart, and what you've been hearing so far, are we here in South Africa weather ready and climate smart? Good morning, Iveka, and uh, good morning to the listeners. And I think, Iveka, you're quite right in terms of the World Meteorological Day, where we're looking at uh, climate smart. I think as South Africa, we are making great progress through the work that the South African Weather Services is doing. Uh, only yesterday, the minister launched a, a radar in the Northwest University that in the main helped us in terms of getting a near real-time information in terms of precipitation, in terms of weather. Therefore, by providing such information, it helped us to plan up front. Uh, we are, of course, now grappling with challenges of climate change. We are experiencing extreme events, which are, quite, are coming quite very strong in the country. And such data is quite very crucial, uh, Iveka, to help us in terms of planning our adaptation responses across the country. I will say, on average, we are doing well. We are one of the best uh, from the weather services in the, in the region. And we have quite a number of instruments across the country, and these instruments help us in terms of getting a real-time, real data information. Well, it seems, though, that we are seeing, like you say, uh, sort of uh, uh, very uh, unusual weather, a, a wide range of hazards. We're looking at tropical cyclones, storm surges, heavy rains, heat waves, the drought that we've seen here ourselves, and, and, and many others. Is this a direct result of what we as human beings, what we as industry are actually doing uh, to our en environment, or is this something that just happens? Well, it has to do, of course, with the contribution in terms of the greenhouse gases that are being emitted to the atmosphere, which in then, uh, you know, contributes in terms of the change in climate, contributes in terms of the shifting seasons. And I think one of the important things that we have to acknowledge is this greenhouse gases knows no boundary. And it's not only South Africa, but the world at large where some of these key industries are emitting these greenhouse gases. So we have to work hard to cap these greenhouse gases. You might have been following the international negotiations on climate change where the international community is trying to come together to cap the greenhouse gas emission, but coming together as well to try and work together to respond to some of these climate change uh, impacts. Well, well, so some it's, it's, it, it, in, it involves, of course, the anthropogenic uh, uh, inputs that are coming from the industries. All right. Well, well, some of those things might be, you know, we, we aren't able to control them. There are things that we can control. I mean, how advanced are we in our technology, in our science, to be able to predict what is actually coming uh, our way and what is within our control to actually to help ourselves, especially when it comes to limiting the loss of life, limiting the damage that is caused on days like this? I think we, we are more advanced uh, through the work that the South African Weather Service is doing. We have uh, quite a number of uh, uh, infrastructure, a number of radars. We have 14 meteorological radars across the country. We have automatic weather, sa weather stations across the country. We have lightning detectors across the country. So we, we are quite advanced, but one of the key things that I think, as Minister has alluded to yesterday, that we still lack him behind in terms of a long-term projection, because at current we are able to get projection up to three months or so, which help us in terms of uh, response. I think this puts us in a better position in terms of providing a cutting edge uh, scientific information that we can utilize. Very recently there was a, a first symposium in the country where scientists came together to share some of the research output that they are having as far as climate information is concerned. So we are advanced. But of course, there is a lot of work that uh, still needs to be done in terms of having more uh, technological devices in the country to help us with this information. 
If I may also add, we are working with the South African Weather Services to develop what we call a national framework on climate services. This framework will bring uh, together quite a number of stakeholders. The research institutions will bring together business, will bring together all these key people who are playing in the space in terms of producing uh, climate information to can work in collaboration and be able to provide information that the users will be able to easily access. Well, that's the so in a nutshell, we are advanced. We, however... Well, Claude, the message has to get to those who are most affected, like if I had to just put it plainly, like those living along the Yekske River. How do we make sure that those messages and that information gets to those who really need it? That is very important. This framework on climate services will be able to make sure that we create an interface between the users and the data producers and information producers. And of course, we have to use different mechanisms. We will use the early warning that uh, the South African Weather Services is producing. We have to engage with community radio station. We have to engage with community-based organization. We have to go down to the ground where people are really at the brand of the impact of climate change. So those are some of the mechanism that I think uh, can be utilized. Of course, this platform that you are giving us is one of the key platforms platform to can communicate uh, you know, some of these projections and be able to share with the entire society what is being projected and help them in terms of uh, them being ready to respond. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for your time. Claude Amaro, Acting Deputy Director General for Climate Change and Air Quality at the Department of Environmental Affairs. We're back after the break.